Anyway, I promised everyone I would let you know at the start if something is going to be a meditation, you know, love be one with the universe video or a uh, Black Lives Matter, you know, political activism. You can probably already tell by the title, this one is bringing awareness um, or questions because I don't have all the answers to a, our current political situation. Now, I, I know I look like a mess. I was uh, gardening and uh, I was doing yard work and I got a couple of calls today from people asking me, Benita, do you know what they mean by defund the police? Um, and I'm like, well, okay. Oh, hi, Catherine. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, thanks for calling me. I'm not sure if I have all the answers, but um, the conversations gave me some material. I thought I may as well share it. All right, so I'm going to go back in history to when Bush Jr., George Jr., became president and Cheney was vice president. And remember, Cheney was Mr. Halliburton. Cheney was making all his money by uh, manufacturing munitions and selling munitions. And, um, you know, he like creating more war was what made Cheney wealthy. All right, remember that. So uh, Halliburton had all these munitions that were getting a little old, like last season style, and they had newer, more deadly, more expensive stuff they wanted to roll out. You know, just like, um, you know, every, what, six months or a year, Apple's like, hey, we got the new iPhone, we've got the new iPad. And you're like, oh my God, this really good one I have is no longer appealing to me. I need the new one. It's the same with munitions to... Uh, you know, country, the leaders of countries around the world. Um, hi, Chloe. Hi, Kim. So Halliburton had all these munitions they wanted to get rid of so that they could sell bigger, better bombs, tanks, whatever. What they did was they set up funding for police departments to basically here's money to you, but this money is to be spent on weapons of mass destruction. And this funding, I don't think it went away. I think it's still in place because the United States um, makes a lot of money off selling weapons of mass destruction around the world. And um, they used to sell their seconds to certain countries that then later became economically more stable. So they wanted the first rate stuff. So they had the second rate stuff or the old stuff they had to get rid of. So um, I know it sounds like I'm always harping on Falls Church City where I recent, you know, moved away from a few years ago, but I'm gonna use them as an example. I'm in no means calling them out specifically. I mean, I am, but I think what I'm about to say, you'll find resonant in all over our country. So <coughs> when I lived in Falls Church, I was running programs to help integrate first and generation uh, immigrant families within the community and helping integrate special needs youth within the community. Um, you know, a community that is completely integrated will thrive better. And we also worked on like, by local, you know, because money you bid into local businesses brings more money to the local community as opposed to sending it out. Anyway, um, one of the things that came up is um, that teenagers were arrested at an alarming rate in Falls Church City on bogus charges, a very common one is uh, the WNOD trail cuts right through the city. And there's a lot of like little neighborhoods that you can go on to Route 7 or 29, or you can cut through like the WNOD trail. There's a bridge that goes over Route 7, or you can cut through like um, the park, a trail that goes past the tennis courts and basketball courts. And they have like picnic tables there where people sit and chat. And there's like the Cherry Hill Park in the middle that you can cut through. So when teenagers cut through after dark, 
they would get arrested for being on county parkland after dark. And um, th I, there was one case I know of where a bunch of teenagers were had been playing basketball and they were hanging out at the benches, which is like, there's a basketball court, the benches, a parking lot, Route 29, like all within 50 yards or less. And they were arrested. It was not even sunset yet, but they were arrested for being on county ground after dark. There are a few things that came of this. One, a lot there's a lot of wealth in Falls Church City. So a lot of these people, their parents hire lawyers and get them out and there's no charge on their record. So a lot of money going through the city with this bogus stuff. Two, um, the highest level of arrest were special needs youth and black and brown youth and mostly boys, the boys were the majority. So if you were a special needs teenage boy or you were a black or brown teenage boy, you had a big target on your back. And if you were not, if you didn't have wealthy parents, you could go and spend a few months to three years in jail for cutting over Route 7 on the WNOD trail instead of going through the traffic. So um, I was looking at our neighboring towns and how they had thriving teen centers. And while we had a very active community center, the teen center had so many sixth through eighth grade students involved that the high schoolers were like, you know, they're not good, they're just not. And I looked at like McLean and Vienna and Arlington that had thriving teen programs where the teenagers were very active in their community through these programs. And I said, let's set up a thriving teen center, but it cannot be in the same room with the one that's already there. It has to actually be for teens. So I went to, to the city council and they're like, no, we don't have any funding for it. We don't have any location for it. And I'm like, wait a minute. First of all, you're putting up all these huge skyscrapers. And these skyscrapers are not built by the city, they're built by private companies. And a lot of them are fairly empty. <laughs> they have big empty spaces. Additionally, whenever these companies build a big skyscraper with condos and retail and all that, um, they're required to donate a certain percentage of money to the city for city community services. And I noticed that none of this was being tapped at all. I said, why isn't this money being used? And they went, oh, well, no one has put a claim on it yet. I'm like, okay, I'm putting a claim on it. Why don't we have a rotating teen center? Tell a building that's going up, tell the company for the first year you're in business, you're donating part of this retail space, which we showed, like was sitting empty in all these places for generally for a year, you're donating one room for a teen center and we're putting some of this untapped money into buying like, you know, video games and setting up activities. And I said, and then the police, instead of harassing teenagers, they can become community liaisons. I see we don't have any money in our budget going to community liaisons, youth liaisons, special needs liaisons, interracial and um, and immigrant integration, like zero money going to any of that. And they're like, oh, we don't have money in our budget for it. I'm like, then let's tap this money and put it in. And I did all the research. I built a proposal. I got the community behind me. We went and put it to the proposal. And, um, and we set up a system where every year this could rotate around. This would be really good for our community. It got slammed because I was so naive, the money wasn't being unused. It was going into the pocket of the chief of police, city council members, it was bribe money. It was like this, there was no money. It was on the records as being there, but it was in the pockets of our corrupt false church city officials. And, um, and this was proven as happening. 
Uh, we got some newspaper articles written about it. We got proof um, because, yeah, anyway. So here's the thing. There was a level of corruption there where the city profited on harassing young people. It did not profit on creating a socially integrated environment. Additionally, because of the Halliburton funds, Falls Church City, which I'll tell you is 2.2 square miles, okay? 2.2 square miles. You can walk in one hour from one end of Falls Church City to the other, all right? If you go trail walking, or if you go for long walks, or if you go for runs and you have a pedometer on you, the next time you hit two, two miles, that's how far it is to walk from one end to the other of Falls Church City. Had, when you go past the police station, look in the parking lot, I would always count between 25 and 32 Falls Church City vehicle, police and sheriff's vehicles, including like armored tanks, paddy wagons, um, like armored, like, every single time I passed and my wellness center was across the street. It was so comfortable. 25 to 32 police vehicles parked in the back of this. They had munitions, like their munitions area would be bigger than my family's house. They could see us through an Armageddon and a zombie apocalypse with all those munitions. And they had funding to get more and more and more. They had zero bicycle cops and they had zero community liaisons. It was because of my effort that they did end up getting, um, I think two bicycle cops, a community liaison who's actually a really great guy. We work together and a, um, a, a special needs liaison and brought special needs youth, you know, training to deal with special needs community into the police station. So, and I know that there's like the chief of police who was there then has left and uh, a lot of the corruption did go with her. I don't know how much, but I know that the woman who was chief of police when I lived there was one of the most horrible, corrupt, evil people I've ever met in my life. Her and I heard her say things that I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> only the worst of humanity would let such words come out of their mouth, much less in public, in front of people who are witnessing. So when we talk about defunding the police, if you have any view on it whatsoever, any view, I recommend you do your research and then think about your view because this is an emotionally powerful uh, situation. And on one side, we need police. On the other side, we do not need police to be the terrorists that we're asking for protection from. So when they're looking at defunding the police, the police may be releasing some of their allocations to social services, or they may be redefining their allocations to being socially active as opposed to, you know, terrorist active. Um, so when you hear defund the police, I'm doing my research and honestly, um, it seems at the moment more of an emotional statement than a here's how we defund the police task list statement. Um, but I am in favor of political leaders looking at what are we funding and why. Why would a tiny sleepy town whose worst crime is teenagers are walking home on a public trail after dark, why do they have this level of weaponry, this level of, you know, automotive vehicles? Why do they not have anything that's really community driven? And like I said, it's my understanding things are changing there. I have since then had members of the police reach out to me um, 
and thank me for things that I started and offer support to me with going forward saying, you know what, your grudge was with the old team or the new one and thanking me because there was a lot of corruption in, when you have a corrupt leader and you got a lot of weapons and bullying is recommended, you're gonna have a corrupt force. So, and I will tell you in the state of Virginia where I live, it is legal for the police to shoot people. They do not even need to file paperwork on that. A cop can walk up to anyone and shoot them, no problem. In the state of Virginia, it is illegal to hold the police legally accountable for any of their actions. You cannot sue the police. You cannot take legal action. You cannot demand, like no matter how many uh, FOAs you put in, how many subpoenas are given, if they don't wanna hand over paperwork, you can't force them. I've even had judges sign, you know, and lawyers with subpoenas saying, you must hand over this paperwork. They're like, eh, no, we really don't. And there's nothing you can do about it. So when we're talking about defunding the police, there's a lot going on there. And I know that there's other police stations that are like doing great. They really care about their community and there's others, they are worse than what I just described. So that's what I have to say about defunding the police. And um, I um, encourage you all to do your research and check into your local police departments. Look at their uh, financial, their funding statements and see what does and doesn't add up because it's all on public record, supposedly. <laughs> Thank you.